U.S. economy in focus. Wall Street getting a snapshot of the job market er, this morning ahead of tomorrow's all-important June jobs report. We had uh, weekly jobless claims just came in at 231,000. Uh, that was a slightly higher than expectations. But the ADP report, the jobless claims will not factor into the jobs report uh, for the month, for last month, for the month of June, because that survey from the government is taken in the middle of the month. But ADP's report did show private sector job growth of 177,000 jobs in June. That was less than expected, but still healthy. What to make of all this? We're still looking at a rally at the open, gains across the board on the Dow, S&P, and the NASDAQ 100. Joining me now is Stock Swoosh founder Melissa Arma. Melissa, your reaction to this, what to expect from the jobs report tomorrow, and also how the market might react? Because, again, is good news bad news in that upside-down world of people worried about inflation and higher interest rates? I think the biggest worry for the market right now is really tariffs, not necessarily these economic reports out today and tomorrow. Even though normally, in a normal environment, the market might have a big reaction to these reports. Uh, but we're up this morning. I'm not very optimistic that, the, that this means we're going to rally on the day today. I think overall the market has been in this really tight range, and we haven't been able to move out of this range really since February. Remember, we had that big drop off in February. We've been stuck in that range for five months. So we're either going to do something here. We're either going to break lower and then finally recover and continue rallying, or we're going to move higher. And the looks of things with the tariffs coming out tomorrow, plus this other report coming out, the economic news, if it's, if it's not as good as expected, like today's report, I can't see how the market is going to follow through higher. But I could be wrong. We'll have to see. M Melissa, the market's been seesawing a lot, you're right, in a, in a tight range. But the S&P 500 at the 2,700 level seems to be a support level. And every time it hits it, it sort of holds and it hasn't broken through. And a lot of the folks watching the market were expecting this big, huge sell-off in the summer, which often happens in, in a midterm election cycle and just hasn't happened yet, notwithstanding all of these tariffs. True, news every true. Day. But think about what's going to happen in the month of July. Think about all the things that are up. NATO summit, Pompeo headed to North Korea. We have earnings season started. Trump's going to meet with Putin. I mean, my goodness, look at this money. I mean, why would you buy in the month of July? Like, go to the beach or something, you know? So we, the Iran nuclear deal, we pulled out the Iran yeah. nuclear deal. You can deal. probably name 10 things. And we're in the, in the trade, and the trade fight isn't just about China and uh, our tariffs, any retaliation from China, but it's also about Canada and Mexico, NAFTA renegotiation yeah. and Europe. But getting back to what Mitch was saying, you're right, that level is held. So what's going to happen? People have been buying there to support it. So if we go down there and the powers that be do not support it, next go around, what's going to happen? The market's going to sell off. And I'm not, I'm not bearish in the market. I don't think that we are going to break this uptrend. We're so far away from breaking the uptrend because of the rally that we had in 2017 that we could fall a gazillion miles before we would be bearish. But I'm saying it's going to look bearish to people. If you're in the market long term, stay the course. But if you are going to retire in the next six to 12 months, then it might be scary if we fall and break that level. Well, how long is it going to take when the tariffs do go into effect tomorrow? Should trading partners start to retaliate for that to trickle into market sentiment? Well, I think the market could have a reaction immediately. I think the market could react immediately. But as far as Trump's game plan for this long term for the tariffs and then the market's reaction long term, I'm still bullish 2019-2020. I think Trump has got the right idea going in ahead what's going to happen, even if all of these things go into effect. And China's saying they're going to wait on us. They're going to see if we really do it. I think Trump's really going to do it. I mean, I don't think yeah. Trump says he's going to do yeah. something and doesn't do it. But this has been pretty well forecast. The, 30, the initial $34 billion July this, um, in, in imports from China that will slap tariffs on, on July the 6th. And in fact, it was Secretary Steve Mnuchin who won out in terms of the fight over investment restrictions on Chinese investment in the United States, uh, greater export controls overseas. That's not what the Trump administration is pursuing. So did that give the market at least some sense of calm and ease? Because we're not, we are not going after China as hard on that note. No, the market's not calm, not at ease. This is a volatile <laughs> time. I'm telling you, we're setting up to give it the most volatile It's not as time bad as, as it could have been. It's not as well, bad as we didn't as sell what... off yet. So, I mean, if we sell off, that that's when it could get bad, but I'm saying don't panic. If you're in the market long term, don't worry. But 
I, I, I'm just saying right here, right now, this month is not a month that I would be running out and buying everything in the world. And to, to Mitch's point too, the banks don't look good. The banks, I have never seen some of these strong banks. Goldman Sachs, JPM, I mean, these are the powerhouses in the market. Their charts look horrible. I mean, I look at technicals, and I'm telling you right now, they've been selling off for months. Is it because the yield curve is flattened, because they can't, because they can't loan money at higher rates? Yeah, but interest rates have gone up, which is normally good for banks. They want your money. So when interest rates are up, you go deposit. Banks want depositors. So you, you would think the opposite is happening. Is it sending a sign that the economy is weak? Again, because a lot of the banks can trade on a number of different things. Are investors concerned that the economy is weak and that's going to hurt the banks? Because again, you've got the regulatory rollback for the banks. I don't think which the economy is weak. I think the economy is strong, but the economy no, doesn't just tell the market. But why are the banks hurt then? Why have the I banks sold off? I don't know. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it's late. It's late in the cycle, and that often happens. And, and Degan, to your point, I also think it's a little bit of a flattening of the yield curve too. But, Melissa, where are the bright signs in the economy? We were just reading about uh, about the U.K. Again, more Brexit concerns, a flat economy there. We clearly see what's happening. We're in a trade war with almost the whole world, including our allies. So where can we look to for the bright signs? The bright side is the big, big thing that Trump did is a corporate tax cuts. We're only six months into 2018. No one's even filed for this year yet. That is the bright side for the future, 2019, 2020, as long as everything stays in place. And it could be perfect timing to set up for Trump to get reelected if everything comes forward. But I mean, that is the bright side for the for the economy, for people looking for jobs, for people looking for higher wages, for corporations looking to save money so they can expand. That's the biggest bright side is the Trump tax cuts. And I think it's good for everybody. Do you expect more businesses to speak out on their concerns about the impact of tariffs on their businesses? Because, again, mm -hmm. what, say, General Motors and BMW have said, that was in filings with the Commerce Department. No, that but wasn't... everybody's scared to say something against Trump, you know what I mean? Like, boop, you, you know, they <laughs> say something and then he tweets something and look at, you know, everything with Harley Davidson. I mean, that stock fell. I mean, that stock, I mean, they came out, they were going to start selling over, and the stock fell that day. You would think, oh, the stock would have rallied the day that they said, well, we're going to, you know, manufacture cars overseas. Well, the stock fell. The stock didn't like that. So motorcycles. No one wants to say anything against the president. Would you? Anna? Well, I listen, I've said if it, <laughs> if it was... Have you been watching? <laughs> no, I, my, and I said this when he was, when President Trump was tweeting about Boeing before, I think the, even the inauguration. Sure. And if it was President Obama, we would be blowing the roof off the building, shouting to the rooftops and to the heavens of how dare you attack an American business. And so I, to, to be... To be fair and equitable, I feel that way about going after an American business and essentially saying people won't buy the motorcycles because, listen, the motorcycles are not, they're not leaving the United States. It's a retaliatory tariff from Europe that Harley Davidson is worried about. Yeah, and, that, and they have to do the thing that is in the best interest of their shareholders and the people who work there. True, but Trump's looking at the big picture here, and I think this is the point. I mean, you can't get too bogged down with one little instance with a company. It's the bigger picture. It's not just the tariffs. It's the intellectual property that China's been stealing, yep. and he wants to shut it down. Yep. And it's the same for everybody then across the board. Okay. Okay. Melissa, thank you so much. Melissa Armo, 